Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. If you're a longtime listener, you should recognize our guest. We have Sophie back on the show again. What is this? The second or third time? It's the third time, actually. No, for fourth time. I don't know. I mean, honestly, I lose track after a while. Like, I just had a guest on for like the fifth time and... Wow. I mean, yeah, it's it's her third time, everyone, and as you can tell, you know, she's getting ready for another show again. I mean, it is just a little bit over a year since we last had her on. I think it was October of the last year, and so, yeah, we're going to be having her on, it looks like, around this time of the year for a while now, but again, you know, yeah, she's on here to give us an update on what she's been up to, and yeah, just just talk health and fitness, but once again, Sophie, thank you so much for coming back on. Thank you for having me. How has it been a year? That's flown. I mean, some of these times that I, because I usually take a year between guests, and by the time I have them back on again, yeah, it's like, I can't believe, like, it seems like it was just yesterday that I was having you on again, and you were talking about um, how they were having such a bad time. What, what was it, installing your Wi-Fi or installing your... Oh, my goodness, was it then? Yeah. yeah um, that's what it was. Oh, it might have been, because we moved in here in, like, the very end of April 21. So, yeah, it's probably been, like, 16, 17 months or so. Wow. I know it does. It flies by. It is. It is just ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I can even remember my first ever podcast I did, which was over four years ago now. I mean, it's four and a half years now. And that's, yeah, I don't, I, 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 yeah, it is just crazy. I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but I ask you this every single time and I'm going to continue to ask you this, even though it some, I have so many people comment on this. Like it's the worst first question ever, but what's the weather like today? Uh, you know what? To say it's the start of November and uh, we're in England. There are no complaints. Like, yeah, it's a little bit cold. You need your hoodie and it's a bit windy, but it's mild for this time of year. We're lucky. It seems it's been raining a little bit, but comes with the territory, doesn't it? <laughs> if it wasn't raining, I consider something wrong with the UK. I mean, I had a, I had a guest on from uh, Wales last week and it was raining. So I was like, you know, what are you going to... Oh, cool. Who you know, was that? Who was the Welsh? Scarlett was her name and I totally forgot her last name, but... Is Scarlett Hollands? No, no, it was someone. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link when it's, uh, or I'll send you just the Instagram after this. But God, oh, that cool. Welsh, that Welsh language, the most unintelligible thing I've ever heard in my. Because I told him I was like, you got to speak just a tiny bit of Welsh for me because like it's the weirdest sounding language I've ever heard in my entire life. It's amazing. It's yeah. fascinating. Like, have you seen the pronunciation of words and stuff? It's mind blowing. How they have some towns there that are literally like forty letters, and it's supposed Bye. to be like one word. Then, and you're like, <sighs> yeah, it is, impressive. It is... It is just crazy. But enough talking about the Welsh language because, by God, that could be a whole podcast in and of itself that I honestly would be fascinated to do. It's been a year since we had you on. What have you been up to? Right. So, last year, I'm trying to think when I would have updated you about this. So, if it was like after we've moved in here in 21. So, I did a couple more shows towards the end of last year. I did the Naturals, Natural Classics and Finals in November down in London. And if I remember right, it would have been literally like this date last year, I'm pretty sure. Um, And I think I was blessed. I took second and third, if I remember correctly, because it was that where we did like two shows on one day. And it was like this whole, they've never done it before kind of situation. So that was awesome. And then finals was like two weeks later or something. Um, and if I remember right, I want to say I might have taken third, I think. I think. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that set me up nicely because the idea was to gain that regional certificate in the November to then do everything for this season. And then they changed the rules. <laughs> <laughs> at the start of the year didn't they they changed it so that it's now like a calendar year so you your regional last year from january to december so yeah anyway um <laughs> so that kind of messed things up because i was supposed to do the muscle contest island show in december of last year that was the whole plan and then that got postponed covid obviously um but in all fairness, there were so many athletes then that wouldn't have been able to travel. So it's only fair. Like, they moved that to, it eventually ended up being May, just gone. And my mom and I went over to stay and she came to watch the show. And that was epic. That was such an amazing show. The promoters were brilliant. They did a fantastic, fantastic achievement with that. Um, I was blessed again, took third. 
Um, and kudos to Jess, who won my height class because she took her pro card that day. And today I watched that she competed in her pro show in Alicante over the weekend. So I think she took fourth, which was incredible. She was up against like two top Olympians, if I recall. Yeah, she smashed it. Um, so that was fun. That was May. And then did another pro qualifier in Alicante at the start of August. Uh, me and the hubs went out for a week. So it caught up on some date nights and had some lunch after the show. Another amazing show. Um, Emilio smashed that one out of the park. It was it was wonderful. Uh, and now, shock horror, <laughs> we are almost five weeks out. I need to check. I think it's five. Or has it been five? Yeah, five weeks out tomorrow on the final show of the season. At least it's before Christmas, I will say that, because that it would be... It is before Christmas. It's the day before my birthday. <laughs> the timing. <laughs> Do you have your order, like, already and everything like that, that, like, you're already going to have? Uh, yes. And I've also made reservations of where I would like to go. <laughs> Wait, so Alicante, is that in Spain? Yes, spot on. Yeah. How is Spain? Because I've always wanted to go to Spain. Spain's beautiful. It's lovely. It's it's one of those like guaranteed nice weather. Yeah, there's hotter times, fair enough, but lovely. Um, there are certain areas that are full of Brits, older generation. Um, but yeah, Alicante was lush. Not been there before. Uh, food was great. Uh, people were lovely. There's quite a few decent bodybuilding gyms around there. It's Titan and probably quite a few others. Um, but yeah, it was lovely, and it was it was decent weather for peak summer so you could not complain that is great and i mean getting second and third so what has been your feedback after all these shows that that um they're saying this is what you need in order to get first or you know place place the highest um when it was the island show um i think it was was it Tarek that gave me the feedback i believe and it was basically um lower ab conditioning um and I rushed my pose in and on reflection, totally agree. So it was just a little more poise and elegance in that aspect, which was wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, however, we were extremely lean for that show. We, I'd weighed in at my lowest weight ever just before flying over. Um, and we took a totally different look to Alicante. I should probably say, OMG, I uh, I took gold <laughs> in Alicante. <laughs> so that was, yeah, a complete cherry. I was going to say, I was like, I'm pretty sure that she that she won something in, in, in one of these yeah. things. So yeah, yeah. I just, uh, yeah, Emperor Classic. It was insane. It was beautiful. Um, amazing. Yeah, definitely amazing. But yeah, the look for that one was so, so, so different that I honestly woke up that morning and I remember saying to Sam at some point like I just it doesn't feel doesn't feel like we're, we're doing a show like it just looked it looked very different but obviously it helped that's what they were looking for on that day um I, I did get it when I look back that there was a lot more fullness a lot more fullness especially in my glutes um and my delts so Obviously, coach knows best. She knows what she's doing. That's why she does what she does. Um, but yeah, it was it was um, a head f up <laughs> to just to just wake up and be like, really, I look totally different. And then mentally knowing, like, oh, I weigh five pounds more or whatever it was. Like, be honest, were you a little nervous about stepping on that stage then with that different look? Seriously, absolutely yes. I remember there was a lady. I think her name was Maria or something similar. Um, and she was at the side of the stage, like guiding the girls up to go on. She was dressed amazingly. She was wearing this like gorgeous sequin dress and she took a little selfie with us. But I remember when I got to the top of the stairs, it, she like gave me a hand as she was helping everyone up and she held my hand with both of her hands and she was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, she went deep breath, go on. And I was like, okay, <laughs> just step down. But she was lovely. She was perfect. She did exactly that. Just calm me down. Like. Yeah, it was so nice. Um, but yeah, Spain Spain was wicked, man. Spain was amazing. Um, and what what a, what an experience. It was just, yeah. What was but, that feeling like when they announced your name and you realized, I just won this? I, 
I took a moment because when they announced second, and it, with it being all in Spanish, I, I looked hilarious on the live stream watching it back. The amount of times when they would... Oh, no, this would have been my face. I would have been like... <laughs> this is the thing. I'm glad half the time you turn around. Because <laughs> I, um, I would always pause because they spoke in Spanish and wait for the other girls to do whatever they'd instructed and then follow along. Um, so that looked hilarious initially. And then when they announced second place, and it ended up being the lady next to me, my face just dropped. So I was like, that wasn't my number. And then the the penny hit, and I just started like hyperventilating. <laughs> Completely forgot it was a live stream and anything. But yeah, watching it back, my face is absolutely hilarious. Photographer nailed it. The pictures reflect the, yeah, funny. <laughs> It's crazy, man. But yeah, I uh, it was definitely bizarre having that different look. But I appreciate comparing the two. Why that's more bikini? So yeah, fair play. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is different. Just you know how how little changes can make that li- that whole different look. And like I've been telling other people that I don't know if I told you this, but I went to my first bodybuilding show ever. There was one literally like five miles from where I live, so I just drove to it. This was over the summer, and first of all being six three i was the tallest person there by about a good I like you're so tall yeah so and most and i so i met like four guests that i had on before and i could have dribbled them like a basketball if i wanted to like they were just so short and i was just like yeah this so like it was funny because there was a line of like a hundred people to get in and i could see over everyone's face like i was yeah you could just see me in the back and i was just like yeah okay <laughs> so yeah that there's that but yeah i was i was just shocked about yeah how little changes on show day can really impact just how you look at just these tiny little things. And there was one poor guy though, where his tan was running on him. Oh no. Was he that yeah. hot? It must, it must've been, which for, let's be honest. That would be me. Like for some reason, I'm one of those people where I like, I sweat a lot. And then I like, so I think my tan would honestly just, just run on me. But yeah. I so I le- I, Mine did Alicante. I will admit. And when oh, it did on the side, I felt the change in like the fan or the air con or whatever it was just stop. Cause I'd obviously moved so far back. And yeah, I did get a little bit like panicky. <laughs> no, I, I, I learned so much just from going to that show alone. And then there were a couple of guests and like, we learned. So yeah, it was, and I, first of all, I didn't learn about like how long those damn shows are. We're like prejudging. And then sometimes you wait like five or six hours and oh, that's torture. Yeah. For, that's torture for you guys having to not like eat. Cause like, oh, I would just. I feel sorry for those with bigger muscle mass, like that you, too. You're so hungry, and obviously really thirsty as well, and like it's exhausting anyway with that much adrenaline in it, like for that kind of day. But yeah, that's why when when promoters do their job and everything runs on schedule, thank you, like it's appreciated. Well, and I did see that you went to an expo. What was that like? Because I've never been to one myself. I mean, if there ever is one close in the area, I might go to it just to meet some people that I've had on and just, you know, meet other people. But what is that experience like? Because I've heard some people talk about just how it's like, it's just such a great experience for so many people. Oh, honestly, that's so much fun. Yeah. If you have anything close by, do it. I'll take a little mini trip if it's not like horrendous drive or something. But seriously, yeah, just, just the vibe, the atmosphere. Everyone's in the same situation, whether they're like, a full-blown athlete or interested in fitness or just anything like everyone loves it and everyone's so I don't know just just hyped up and motivated it's really inspiring it's nice it would have to be during the summer though because I'm in already my winter bloat so you can see the extra I've already put on a little bit of weight I got about five more pounds to go before I finally max out and I'm like okay Ryan you gotta you gotta and then it's it's just it's just a never-ending cycle because then you gotta lose the, the 10 to 15 pounds every spring but hey when it's when it gets to be negative twenty degrees here, you know it, Ooh, it's worth it. it it's it's, it's worth it to be a little be bit strong, heavier. Right? <laughs> yeah, after, well, at, and well, yeah. I just yeah, I have a job too where I'm work. I'm walking like fifteen thousand steps a day, so like I have to consume so much food just to be able to function. Really, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, it is ridiculous. And I've become I've become a coffee guy too, which I never thought I would Ooh. be. So that's a whole another whole another topic there, but. Yeah, those expos, if they are one close, I mean, luck. unfortunately, I live, you know, and the closest one would be like in Chicago, which is like a six hour drive, but I don't even know if they ever have one there, but so I'll have to, I'll have to see if there's one ever close by, but I mean, the shape changes every year, the training changes a little bit. What have been some changes that you've made, you know, either to your physique or to your, or uh, no, uh, so let me redo this everyone, because I normally do ask this, what is one area of your physique that you think you've improved on the most since we last had you on last year? 
Oh, okay. Um, well, I know from looking at my progress photos and checking my measurements, glutes wise, we have made some progress. And I definitely filled out along that like, top upper quadrant, whatever they want to call that bit. Definitely, definitely there. And I hope also, I hope uh, conditioning in my stomach because I've really been trying hard posing wise to help show that off, if anything. That was always the biggest thing for me was lower abs. Like even when I was in my most at shape, I had like a five pack basically because there would always be that <laughs> one ab like at the very bottom. That, like no matter how hard I trained, no matter how hard I dieted, like it would never, it would never pop. So when you said lower abs, I was like, God, and that's every guy's thing. Cause we got, the guy's got the pouch thing here where if we have one thing now, I'm 28 years old now. So now I'm at the thing where if I have like one milkshake, you know, I can feel it sort <laughs> of in my stomach. So, you know, I, the lower abs. Yeah, that is. So what did you train? What'd you do at least for lower abs? Cause I might need to take notes here then because I am, you know, every guy, when they hear lower abs, they're like, Oh yeah, that's where every, all of my fat goes. Oh, yeah, that's the thing though, isn't it? We can't spot reduce or whatever and that stuff. But um, I don't do much ab work, to be fair, um, three times a week. Most, I like a few lower ab exercises, to be fair. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of the hanging versions just because it hurts. <laughs> it hurts my shoulders. Um, I was too tall to really do them that much, too. Most of the times, my, my uh, feet would be on the ground. So, oh, yeah, that's true. You'd have to just like knees up instead. <laughs> But I think like the laid down version, so like leg raises, if you like, much, much better. Um, and I already enjoy that that air bike as well. I think that's a good one. As long as you don't rush it. If people rush it, you don't you can't feel it. But yeah. This and people don't make the mistake that I did when I was in, in college where I trained abs every single day. Like it was every day. So then I got like I got those CrossFit abs where like they were out. Like they, they popped out really. Yeah. It was like the pregnant ab kind of thing. Like the CrossFitters yeah. kind of have where it's like the, the bloated abs. So I got that. So it was kind of weird. So it took me like a good year and a half to like not have a bloated abs really where you're just like, yeah, it was Oh weird. my gosh. Is CrossFit huge where you are? Like state wise? I think it's bigger than it is in the UK, in right. the UK, but like it's it's a cult and it's kind of crazy i'm not gonna lie like yeah. I, I i have some friends that do it and stuff but yeah again this is i'm too tall for crossfit too like i went to one class just for jokes trying to do like those kipping pull-ups when you're six three is kind of a oh my gosh it's it's a harder thing for me to do but yeah it is it is i'd say it's pretty big here i mean it's not like it is in iceland where that's like the national sport basically but like that oh, is, is that? Well, because like all the good ones are from Iceland for some reason. I have no idea why. Like, especially for the women, and then they have the the mountain and the guys like that are also from Iceland. Which, oh yeah. So, can we just talk yeah. about for for a country of only three hundred thousand people? They got a lot of like <laughs> fit people for a country that small. So yeah, that's a whole different thing. But yeah, so it is it is pretty huge in the UK. Is it like just kind of more of a like lesser thing than it seems like it? I, I don't really hear of that many CrossFitters from the UK. Really. I mean, to be fair, the last. For me, at least, the last five years, it's definitely been one of the things that's been, like, increasing in people's interest and stuff. And that you do see a lot more advertisement for it locally now, which is nice. Um, but I've also found that, like, a lot of bodybuilders in their improvement or off-season switch to CrossFit, which I find fascinating. I'm assuming it's obviously, like, the high intensity, that explosive kind of stuff and as a potential replacement for a bit of cardio. Don't blame you, but I'd be terrified of injuring myself. Well, the thing is, you look at the CrossFit body and you look at the bodybuilding body, CrossFit, like, the muscles just don't they all add have... up the same way. <laughs> but, but like, you see, like, some of these CrossFit athletes do, like, a front double, and it's, like, the biceps just aren't – they're not, like, n like you would look if, you, like, you actually train with weights. I think it's just because it's more – body weight it just they don't look yeah and they're a lot heavier too like you said like yeah they are a lot more they have all the they size look, and everything yeah, yeah they, they are so yeah it's thicker thickness i ran into a couple of crossfit guys and yeah it's like first of all it's like yeah you guys are ridiculous but yeah it's so i have believe it or not i have had probably about a dozen guests on that have said that like yeah they do a little bit of crossfit in the off season nice. a little bit is for the cardio and then a little bit too is just where they just want to you know get something done too but then you know yeah that is yeah, they're two different things, but I'm glad that, you know, it's so much easier for injuries, though, too. I do have to put that out there, though, too, because I've heard too many injury stories for, for CrossFit. But, yeah, that is that is just absolutely No, ridiculous. thanks. But, yep, absolutely. But nutrition, you changed things up at all this last year with nutrition? Uh, I think what we switched the most because of the way that my trainings amended um, 
And I have to hold my hands up. I completely screwed my metabolism after the natural shows last year. Um, I had an, an effort moment um, because I was getting a lot of what I interpreted as social pressure to enjoy normal foods and eat normally at a festive period. Was so, it your husband? I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we had about four days of what I would deem a sugar coma and I hated it. I felt vile, but I did say you, you wanted, you wanted me to in, indulge. I'm indulging for these few days and that's it. And I put on four pounds, which, which didn't budge just four pounds. Like, yes, there was water weight initially. So it was probably about nine pounds, <laughs> But yeah, that four pounds just stuck and my metabolism just went, <laughs> hell no. Um, so we had to do a hell of a lot of work getting me ready for the regional show before Ireland, uh, which I did at the end of April. So yeah, that was a graft and we had to reset a lot. Um, so majority of stuff now that's changed is like less fats, more carbs. Protein's always been nice and high. So that's not been an issue. Where was the show in Ireland? So we flew to an airport called Shannon and it was held at the University of Limerick's concert hall. It was beautiful. So we stayed in Limerick. As much as I like living in the US and being American, I will say to be in Europe where you can literally like you like you do. You just travel to a different country. You want to go to Spain, you can go to Spain. You want to go to Ireland, you can go to Ireland. I want to go to Canada, I can go to Canada. That's about it. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Never been there, want to go there, but like, yeah, just the travel options that you have. I mean, I am planning on going to Norway, maybe this, it's either going to be this summer or next summer, depending on how much free time I have. I got to go visit. So there's a village that my family's been living in for like the last, I think it's like a thousand years. So I got to go visit nice. it. Yeah, definitely. I love it. Well, any part of Scandinavia, I'd love to visit. No, oh, and they live on a fjord too. And that's always been my dream to go visit one of the fjords there too. So it's just so beautiful. Like even from the photos and stuff that I see of, of the thing and all that. So, and apparently Do you get one Northern of them, Lights there. I'm not sure if you... Um, about a couple hours north of... Oh, in, in Norway or where I am where I live? Oh, to be fair, yeah, you, if you're high enough up. but I'm, I'm high enough. Norway. I'm high enough where I'm... I'm about a three-hour drive north. You can see Northern Lights. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah, I am... Well, I'm... Yeah, I'm about three hours from the Canadian border. And then... um, But I'm, like, right in the middle. It's... So uh, yeah, cool. so I can, I've never seen the Northern Lights before, but I have friends that rave about it where they go during the winter time, especially they'll go when they go ice fishing up, up North, they'll go and they'll go and talk about it, which I mean, that's, that's an experience. That don't, I mean, I, I don't think you've ever been ice fishing. Cause I don't know even in the UK if they even have. Yeah. So it, that, I mean, you just drink all the day. That's, that's really all you do just to pass the time because you're going to, you're not going to get that many nibbles, but yeah, it's a huge, huge thing up here. But yeah, the Northern lights, I've heard about it and I've had friends that have taken photos with it. And apparently it's a, it's a sight to see, but yeah, when I go to Norway, I'm definitely going to want to see that if I can go, if I can that's cool. do that. Definitely. Myself. Yeah. So yeah. And I mean, as you're getting closer and closer to the show, how does your mindset change over time? Is, I mean, obviously as, you start restricting more and more and more calories and, you know, maybe up in cardio and doing stuff. But how, how do you deal with this part of the journey mentally? Because this is the most important part of it. And let's be honest, like you guys don't have Thanksgiving. So at least you don't have that to worry about. But like you still have holidays to think and you still have other things to worry about. So how do you deal with this mental side of the sport as you get closer to the show? Yeah, well, first thought initially is that I'm actually in a very, very blessed situation right now that that's not happening. But obviously it did in terms of getting prepped for the start of the year. And it was just a case of you need that mental resilience to be like, this is what you want. You got to work for it. No matter what it is in life, if you want something hard enough and you come across hurdles, shit happens, life throws curveballs, you got to work hard. You got to find a way over that obstacle. Aren't you? So reminding myself that it was temporary was always a good start that it was purposeful because it was going to get me to where I wanted to be and that I had in essence done it before as well. So proof there that you can do it again. Absolutely. And I mean, this is a question that I've, I don't even think I've asked you yet. And it's a question that I've started to ask all the guests that are natural on this show, because like, I know that a lot of my guests aren't and it's a vast majority of it, but what about, what about being natural was just so appealing to you in this sport in a, because 
let's be honest, when everyone turns pro, when they're in, you know, the NPC and all the other things, they more than likely aren't. But what in what made you decide that, like, hey, I want to stick to this and keep doing it the natural way? Because this is a sport where very few and far between people actually are natural, that even if they t- say that they are, they aren't. Yeah, which is a shame when people don't feel then they can be open about whatever lifestyle choice they have. But um, yeah, I have obviously no issue with whatever other people want to do. <laughs> oh, um, for me, it's like I don't care what uh, I don't care what yeah. you do. It's like just don't lie to me and tell me that you got all that by natural, and then try to fool people. That's the only thing that gets me. Where it's that's like, fair. otherwise, do whatever you want. I don't care. Hell yeah, that's totally fair. But I guess decision for me was just kind of like. I want to know what I'm capable of. Like, there's um. In fact, I'm wearing the freaking hat. Um, self-made. This this brand, uh, family run, local, um, local family run brand, which is wonderful, and it is literally about that. Like, y- you are and you have achieved what you have because of you. So, like, I want to know what my limits are. Um, and to be honest, anything like that kind of doesn't appeal because then it's like a helping hand um in whichever way and I appreciate I've learned this year quite a lot of the girls that I didn't think used mostly thermogenics and that kind of level of stuff um that do and it really shocked me and I was a bit like initially I had some thoughts of like isn't it is it just about being impatient maybe because like I've I've been too lean for the bikini criteria and then I've been fuller and now I can see that it's a little bit like, okay, well, is it just a time thing? Like, don't rush that process. Don't stress your body anymore. Like this, this is extreme as it is, but like we've said, each to their own. But at the end of the day, for me, I just want to know what I'm capable of. Yeah. I got some chores that I'll share with you after we're done recording this podcast about, about <laughs> my, that whole journey, because yeah, that is, that is like when I first learned like just how prolific yeah. the usage was in the sport, like obviously anyone with any bit of a brain would say that there is some, but like just how much it is would be just shocking to people. But yeah, I'll save that for after the podcast. Cause I don't want to get myself, you know, in trouble right now. You know, we'll wait until, we'll wait until I feel like getting canceled. Then I'll just go on a whole rant about it or something <laughs> like that. But yeah, so I, yeah. And I, I, I do, I do like having more natural people on the podcast because it does show that like, yeah, you can do this sport naturally and you can do it. You know, like you said, just trying to see how good you can, what your limits are. And, you know, a lot of people, decide to not do that even before they've reached their natural limit and then it's just like well then you would never know like maybe you could have just achieved that had you put more time and effort into the process into like a few years down the road but sure um, I mean I will be totally honest if there was like a slide indoor moment and I could see what I'd look like with enhancements or whatever form of drugs I'd be intrigued like you've still got to put the work in it's not like a magic pill is it so I'm waiting for that magic pill, but I, but it unfortunately hasn't been invented yet. Yeah, full respect to anyone in this game, but yeah, oh, just absolutely. Personal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I I totally understand that. Yeah, I I have the absolute respect for anyone that you know. You still got to put the work in. I mean, it's just it. So many people have that 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 opinion that like, oh, just if you take one thing, then like you don't have to do any. Or it just it makes it so much easier. And it's like, yeah, well, it might, but you still got to put the work. It's it's That's like, stigma, right? For sure. Like, oh, they take steroids. So wait, so wait, your husband's a, your husband's a big video gamer, right? Absolutely, yes. So, like, so I heard someone say this even better, where it's like taking steroids is like getting the cheat codes for a video game, but you still got to play the video game. Yeah, you still got to be good at it, right? Yeah, you still got to play the game. It's just it might be a little yeah. bit easier now. So, but yeah, it's yeah. So okay, yeah, that's cool. I like that. I it was it was it, it's a comedy fitness account that I follow, which is pretty funny. So I might have send you the link to that too. But yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, it. I I just you know I love bringing that up now because as I've gotten more and more into this podcast, I realize that like, hey, more people got to know that like some of these people that are saying that like you can look just like me if you try this. It's like, well, they are on testosterone. Oh so yeah, that's it, you know, it's like it's like come on now, people. Let's go like that's it's, worrying, isn't it? For the for those that may be what for a better word ignorant to that side of the sport i've had three people that have come on that got tricked into like no. um following those people and doing their stuff because they thought that they'd look like them they didn't do any they didn't do any of the hard drugs or anything like that but like they got tricked into like buy my workout plan and stuff like that and then you'll look like me and then they're like yeah oh, like, I'm, I'm not shred, yeah right? you'll get like shredded and stuff like that and you're like well so yeah that's a whole nother that's a whole nother different topic too but yeah so yeah this is Hang on one second. My neighbor is mowing his lawn here, but I hope it's not too loud. He's got to mow his lawn like every 
at like 11 it's 11 a.m i can't right? hear so it's all okay good, good. So while, okay good but it's while also- you've like distracted from something i need to ask you a question yeah i'm fascinated by whatever little creatures are behind you hanging off the walls are they like lemurs or something okay so they're monkeys right yes, yes they're okay <laughs> give me just get, hang on give me one second here <laughs> <A little bit. laughs> oh my goodness all right, so these are what they call rally monkeys. Oh, how cool. Professional baseball teams, the major leagues, they have these that you can buy at the stadium. These are from nice. when – so when I was a kid, we went to like – out of our 32 baseball stadiums in the in the country for major leagues, I think we went to like 20 of them, I think. We used to, we used to travel a lot when I was a kid. Like we'd go on vacations every summer when I was done That's playing cool. baseball. So those are from – when I was younger, those are from like all the teams that I've Oh. Been to obviously the Minnesota Twins, the New York Mets, the Philadelphia Phillies, the Washington Nationals, the Colorado Rockies, Baltimore Yo. Orioles, Boston Red Sox, and then the Pittsburgh Pirates. That is well so, impressive. I love that. So yeah, I used to get one every single time, and then I, you know, I'm, I so right before COVID, I finally moved out, and I had to move back in because of COVID. And now with my new job, it's looking like by the end of <laughs> by the end of this year, or I'm honestly, I'm just gonna stay for the holidays, really, just because I could probably move out in like a month. But like, I'm just gonna stay for Christmas because I'm gonna Not be like, too. I'm gonna be staying in for Christmas anyway. I'm gonna be like living here anyways for Christmas, so might as well. But so now I finally got a, so I'm still in my childhood bedroom that has all of my rally monkeys that I had. Ah, so love it. Yeah, that's the thing. That. That's yep, awesome. That is, yep, that is the thing. And well. I don't know if you're that familiar with baseball, but there's the famous pitcher, Nolan Ryan, and I am, my older brother's named Nolan, and I'm named Ryan because of him. No, that's so, cute. I, like I was that. a, Well, my dad was a pitcher, I was a pitcher, and then he wanted to name my little brother Cal after Cal Ripken Jr., but my mom said no more baseball names, so then they named him Mitchell instead, so. Did you put her foot down? <laughs> she put her foot down, yeah, so that's that's, that's why when cool. we got a dog, that's why when we got a dog, she had to, have a, she had to get a female dog, because she's like, we need to have at least some more estrogen in the house not so, <laughs> yeah she's like we have too many men in the house we need to we need to put some add some females in the house so yeah we had to get a girl dog so but yep that is our little yeah our, we are a huge Aww. baseball family here i mean we haven't so my my older brother was drafted into the major leagues he, he never played in the majors he spent two years in the minors and then he got hurt so he's done now but he does like um he was a catcher, so he does like a lot of catching tutorial things and stuff with oh, people. Sick. So, yeah, we're a huge, huge baseball fan. And my little brother decided to play hockey. He was the hockey player in the family, which I wish. Oh, cool! If I could redo it, I would have played hockey. Let's be completely honest. I'm in, I'm in Minnesota, the state of hockey, where we have state tournaments here. This is just for high school. We play in front of twenty thousand people. Yeah, for high school. If you're in the state tournament. That's incredible. We have a rink that seated like twenty five hundred people, and every single night it would be sold out. It would be sold out for games for for high school. So yeah, it's 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 crazy here. So yeah, so I there's assume that's similar to when we do our varsity tournaments with university students, like eighteen plus. Is that right? Yeah, except here it's like it's fourteen to eight, fourteen Whoa. to eighteen. Yeah. Oh, that's so, amazing. So, What's bigger yeah. over there, field hockey or ice hockey? We don't even play field hockey over here. Ah, only in college. Only in college you can play field hockey, but it's not even a high school sport or anything that you can play. Because uh, I was just thinking, like when you said hockey yeah. straight away, my head went to ice hockey. Uh, oh yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like I said, they call mm, they call Minnesota like the thirteenth province because we're it's basically Canada. We're like <laughs> we we like hockey as much as the Canadians do, really. So it's just. Yeah, there's there's oh. always that big joke that they've made about it, but so yeah, field hockey. Have you ever heard it. of any British like ice hockey stuff? No. Uh, the only one I know of is the Nottingham one, which is Panthers. One guy that went to my high school ended up playing hockey in the UK for two years professionally because he just he just oh, wanted cool. to keep playing professional hockey, so he played in the UK for two years. And I remember talking to him, and I was like, "Do they even know about hockey over there?" He's like, "Yeah, they don't really have a clue." So you know, they don't, they don't, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a yeah. So it's just, but you know, hey, and I don't know if you're paying much attention to this, but the NFL teams, my Minnesota Vikings, played in London a couple of weeks ago. Oh, they had how their, nice. They had their football. They won there, yeah. But yeah, there's there's that whole thing. So yep, there's. Yep, a lot of stuff going on here now. I mean, we are getting close to the uh, football stuff. When I say football, I mean American football, obviously, yeah. because good God. But, you know, yep, so there's that. But good God, we got on a sports tangent. Hey, I enjoyed it. That was that was, that was was great for me. Yeah. But That's so cool. Now, at, also, as you get closer and closer to this look, now, fortunately, you are covered up because it is getting colder and colder. But, like, what are the reactions that you're getting, like, as, even, even though you are covered? Like, people can still see that, like, oh, yeah, she probably works out a little bit. 
<laughs> I go to the gym. Um, yeah, you know what? You just reminded me. One of my colleagues the other day, um, beautiful other nurse at work, she did say she's like, "You're looking very lean." So I was like, "Oh, thank you." Like, I do, I do have those moments where it's like, when you live lean, you just you feel the same whether your weight's up or down. And obviously, mentally, yeah, it always plays around in it. But I do feel like I do feel better about the hitting the criteria more with the way that we've changed things around so yeah it's nice and cardio is nice and steady I'm just doing walks at the minute so it's reducing any like inflammation and stuff and food's blissful so I'm a happy little bunny refeed again last week so at six weeks out all we switched up was we took out an off-plan meal and changed it for a directed refeed that was it (laughs) Do you deal with blisters at all when you walk? Because that's a huge problem that I dealt with this last summer when I started walking Ooh. in. I had to double sock it. That was my trick that I found out. Where if I double socked it, I wouldn't get blisters. That's clever. I've been uh, I've been all right, but I've got decent shoes. I only live in high tops, so that's a rule. Okay. Yeah. So there's. I mean, I, I should send you some videos because I live next to a nature park too, so I see at least a deer every time I go out on a walk. Oh. And then I've seen turkeys and I've seen like <laughs> raccoons. You see squirrels all the time. There's an albino squirrel, and then there's a black squirrel that we got too. So that it, it's oh. crazy. I call him White Lightning as the white squirrel that squirrel that I call him. And so you know, awesome. I call him that. But you know, and so yeah, I that's the only that's the only good part about living out here. Sort of. Yeah. See, that's so weird. Like wildlife wise comparison, squirrels. Yeah, get the squirrels. Pigeons. I had a guest from Australia said that, that that's the one thing that they want to see when they come over to the states with squirrels because they don't have squirrels in, they don't have squirrels in Australia apparently. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Aww. Yeah, but then they could have a kangaroo jump through their gardens. <laughs> Dude, it's like you guys have kangaroos and wombats and like koala bears and stuff. It's like I wouldn't right? be complaining. Tasmanian devil is my favorite animal. So. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. But yeah, like squirrels, pigeon, and then hedgehogs. Hobby found a hedgehog in the garden the other day. And instead of raccoons, our version would be what, like a badger? That's true. You guys have anything like badgers? Well, the Wisconsin, the state right next to me, their college mascot is a badger. So, yeah, we got, I think we, I've never seen a badger in wildlife. I've never seen a hedgehog in wildlife. But yeah, I've seen a beaver and I've seen, I saw a bear one time. That was pretty freaking scary. But that's um, crazy. Yeah, yeah, they, there's some black bears around here, and then there's a few brown bears too. Do they even have? I'm not. I know it's a stupid question, but do they even have bears in the UK, like in the wild? This is a stupid answer. I don't know. Um, I, I, no, I honestly, like, I honestly don't think. So. England, yeah. But I would question mark somewhere like Scotland. I ain't trusting. Yeah, because I know that England's so like densely populated. Like there isn't really that much wildlife really around. Because like yeah, you're fitting get, 60 million yeah. people in this. So the state that I live in is the same size as the UK, and we only have five million people in it, as opposed to the 60 that's in the UK. So that just gives you a little hint there. Yeah, um, we're all top and tailing over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. So. Yep. 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 So it is absolutely crazy, but. Yeah, so do you have any idea of, like, how things are going to be cut these next few weeks or what's going down, or is your coach just kind of do a minute-by-minute thing where it's like, I'll just tell you the day of? No, she's she's epic. So at the minute, we're still checking in every Tuesday. So I'll be checking in tomorrow morning, and that will mark literally five weeks out tomorrow to the day. Um, And that means that on the Saturday coming, it will be four weeks until I fly the last freaking Vegas. <laughs> oh, you're coming to the States? I'm coming to the States, dude. Is that your first time? No, it's my second time to fly to the States, but the first time to ever compete in the States. Where'd, you go, your fir- where'd you go your first time? Uh, so it was a girly trip about, oh my goodness, like 11 or 12 years ago, maybe, okay. um, where my friend was working over in New York. So I flew to New Jersey Stayed in New Jersey because it was like $100 for the week for the accommodation and then took the free shuttle to New York every day. <laughs> Crazy. I've been to New York about, the last time I went there was probably like 10 years ago, but yeah, I've been, no, it was like 15 years ago actually, but it was, I've been there like three or four times just because we would go, we, we played in a tournament there in Cooperstown where baseball, it's like the baseball hall of fame. We played a, all, me and each of my two brothers all played in a tournament there. So we'd spend the, like a, a week there oh. in the summer that would that would do that. So, and then we'd always go like see Yankee games or go, go to Mets games. And oh, that's so, fun. yeah, I we like did it. that. But Las Vegas, please tell me you're going to at least gamble a little bit. 
Oh, I have to. It must be illegal to leave Las Vegas without having a putter, right? I've got to do it at least once. So the only positive thing about living in Minnesota really is that because we live, there are a lot of Native American reservations around here. So because of that, the gambling age here is 18 and it's 21 everywhere else in the country. Okay. So I have been gambling a while. There have been times that I've walked in there with a hundred dollars and I've walked out with 2,100. That was the most I ever got in, in one day, but there have been other times. Too. I think if you were to average everything out, I am plus like a couple of grand, but I've, I've lost a lot recently. I haven't gone that. I mean, not since COVID. I think I've been there once since COVID, but I, I normally, I don't, I don't do that much gambling, but yeah, it is a, yeah. I mean, there are five casinos within a 10 mile radius of me. So it's oh my gosh. Yeah. Risky mm. game. That one. <laughs> Why well, do roulette? So I don't do I don't do no. blackjack. I don't trust I don't trust that. And uh, you know roulette. What would you recommend roulette. if I was going to have a go? Like, would you say slots, roulette, blackjack, roulette, roulette, roulette. and then well, put it on? What would, what would I do? <laughs> well, you can either do the red or the black because then you can get because then it pays out two to one if you get a red or a black. But I do the thirds thing. So like, there's 36 numbers, and if you say like it's going to land between a one and a twelve, and it lands between a one and a twelve, then you win three times of what you bet on it. Oh, that's better. I thought you had to pick like a specific one. That's cool. Well, you can do that too. And then it pays out 36 to one. So like if you got it, so if you put $10 on it, you would win $360. So. Oh, damn. But you can pick like a segment instead. So the day I turned 21, I went to the, or I mean the day I turned 25, I went to the casino and I put $20 on 25 and I won. So I won $720 just from putting that down on the thing. But that was, that was a dumb bet. Like I should never have done it, but like, Hey, it, it paid out for me. But yeah, I have been there at times where a guy put like $100 on one of them one, so he won like $3,600, but yeah, there are a lot of, yeah, it's not, it's, it's wow. not the smartest thing to do, but yeah, I do thirds or, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but yeah, I'd say, and you gotta go see at least, you gotta go at least see a show or something like that while you're in Vegas too, you gotta, you gotta at least plan that out. Well, can I make my suggestion a little different, because yeah. I'm officially going to watch the Olympia. <laughs> oh, okay, so yeah. That's true. So the show... Is the Amateur Olympia on the 13th. Okay. Whoop, whoop. And then, yeah, Expo and Olympia finals from Friday onwards. Boom. I was going to say, you got to go see an Elvis impersonator. You got to go see Ooh. whatever's going on there. Him. He was my childhood hero and still is. I adore Oh, Elvis. he's my favorite. I have said this. I've said this. I published a story on it that if I could interview any dead, like, celebrity or just spend a day oh. in the life, it would be him. It wouldn't even be, it wouldn't even be close. If I could do a day in the life where I just followed him around for a day, that would be the yes, greatest. Please. Yeah. He's my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Elvis are impressive. You, you see the new movie that they did? You know what? I haven't seen it yet, but I do want to. You Have should. You... Yeah. Bring Good. some clean. Bring some Kleenexes for the end, though. That's all I'm going to say. But... Uh, does the actor nail it? That's what's important. Yeah, he yeah. does. Like, uh, more than any other one that I've seen. Obviously, like, you can't. There's only one Elvis Presley, so, like, you're not going to get it, like, perfectly. But 100. he does a pretty close job where it's it's pretty close. So, yeah, that's I will you... say. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It's it's good. I I will say though that the funny thing is, is that like his mom was like severely obese in real life, and they made her like really skinny oh, yeah. for the movie. So you're like, did they? I, I I yeah. It was so funny because like I saw the actor that played the mom, and then I was like, wait, the mom was like 300 pounds, and then the actors playing her is like skinnier ish, and then what you're like, okay, that's kind of 100 pounds. We'll look at a photo of her and Elvis, and that's it's that's a good guess. Okay. There's I'll a reason that she died in her forties. So yeah, she died in like her forties and there's a reason why I think, so, but you know, yeah, yeah. I know. She, and plus her name was Gladys too, which is, it's funny how people don't yeah. name people. That's, that's one of those names where like you never hear of anymore where you're just like, okay, Gladys, that's a, that, that's it's a, such a generational name now. Isn't oh it? yeah. Oh yeah. Like my grandpa's name is Alfred. You don't hear that anymore. Oh, uh, mine was Albert. Albert. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we call well, we call him Al for short. Yeah, I'm going to be seeing him over Thanksgiving. 96 year or no, 97 years old, World War II veteran. I it's ah, crazy. Yeah. yeah, so Thanksgiving for you guys, that must mean the towards the end of November because we have Black Friday as a result of Thanksgiving, right? So the day before Thanksgiving, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't so it's Black every Friday. It, it never has a set date because it's always the last um Thursday of the of the month. Oh, that's how it works. So it's so okay. it's never a set date. So we always have so for work, we always have Thursday and Friday off that week. So except yeah. the job that I worked at previously where we had to come into work on Friday. And then I just told them like, no, I'm not coming in on Friday. I'm taking, I'm taking the day off. And then I take a vacation day, but. So yeah. it's always November, but it's the third Thursday. That's Thanksgiving. Yep. So it's always a different day. So there's some days. So there's some Novembers where there's an actual, like almost a full week afterwards. And then there's other, <clears throat> there's other days where it's like the last Thursday of the, 
So yeah, they just said it as a yeah. They never set a set date where they just said yeah, it's always going to be oh, on a Thursday. So okay, yep, cool. I'm and then, it. <laughs> and then it, the whole tradition is every Wednesday, everyone goes and gets blackout drunk at their local bar with all their friends. That's the tradition. The, the, the night the before. Yeah, yeah, but there have been times where I woke up then and I couldn't go to my Thanksgiving because I was way too hungover to Wounded. get up out of the couch. So yeah, that that's was a mistake. how people do it here for Christmas Eve. A lot of people, the tradition is like Christmas Eve early doors at the pub get yourself in lock in job you're not done. spending time with family on christmas eve in the uk see that's that was my tradition but like but thinking back like uh. yeah as kids there was a lot of times when it'd be like all the dads would go down to the pub on like the christmas eve wow. and stuff yeah Never, yeah that that is foreign here like if you weren't spending time with your family you're considered like a piece of shit here basically so see like... now pubs here <laughs> yeah. it's such a culture isn't it yeah. that's great mm-hmm. wow yeah, we don't really have that much of a pub culture here unless you're like my dad's small town of 120 people where they had two bars in a town of 120 so cute <laughs> yeah, yeah there's that but yeah so sophie i mean i ask you this every single time and i want to see if your answers are different as we get close to wrapping things up here if you could change one thing about the sport of bodybuilding and everyone would go along with it will be one thing that you'd like to see change Ooh. okay oh i've thought of one okay how about because I know that when they have the pro shows, all the athletes get this amazing buffet spread of food in the backstage area. Can they just do that globally for amateurs, please? Because that would be epic. <laughs> have you seen the spreads? They look immense. They look like Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter rolled into one on steroids on a table. <laughs> I just it's gained nice. five pounds thinking about buffets, basically. Oh, seriously. What would be your, like, chosen buffet items? What are your, like, go-to? Well, I'm an American, so pizza, hamburgers, chicken yeah. fingers, you know, French fries. Yeah, that's the, that's the dumb. No, but and then, honestly, like, you got to have, like, potatoes, and you got to have um, no vegetables. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> you talk about, oh, you got to have, like, you got to have some less. And it's like, like, no, well, get, salad. get out of here. No, oh, <laughs> I know way too many girls like that. Oh, yeah, I got to have my salad. Want a fruit yeah. platter? <laughs> I'd rather no. go fruit over veg out of the two, to be fair. At least it's sweet. Yeah, that's true. But, that um, would. yeah, so probably just that. What would be your ideal buffet? Because oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The English are great people, but I will say you guys have crappy food. I'm not going to lie. Like, it's... Uh, our, yeah, our legit local cuisine isn't... It, I always think of pie or fish and chips. That and too. That or appeals, truffles. Like... Or the, or the, what's the meat pie that you guys have? What's it called again? Steak I totally ale a lot or steak and kidney. Yeah, I don't... Yeah. It's not that appealing to me. <laughs> no, 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 because I remember it's full of gravy. <laughs> I no, because I remember when um Kate got married. Uh, Kate Milton got married to whatever his name is. What is it? Which one is it? Which one? What that prince? <laughs> that prince. Yeah, that prince. prince. I remember that wedding was like ten years ago, something like that. Like, yeah, my mom and some of her friends wanted to have like a British like dinner or something like that as they watched the thing and then i tasted this all this food and they're like yeah it's traditional british food and i was like yeah i think there's a reason why we declared our independence from these guys because they have horrible food that might have been one of the reasons but what you know have? No. Have, like scones and strawberries. yeah 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 let's go on she yeah. had truffles and then she had tea and i never had tea before and then i took one sip of it and i was like yeah what a waste but then um yeah mm-hmm. i have uh, there are some of my friends that love tea and then i'm like okay we're not british so why are you drinking tea but then so yeah coffee is our tea basically but you know that's, that's- but wow if i had to pick buffet food for me um if i'm thinking sweet stuff which isn't what i'd normally reach for straight away but it'd have to be cookie slash cookie dough goodness without a doubt and ice cream of any form that's ben and jerry's why don't you just get a dairy queen cookie dough blizzard that's my go-to oh that sounds exciting um but if it's like savory versions oh you know what if they can they just put like loads of like Italian stuff? Like, can I have a lasagna on the buffet or something? <laughs> Pizza goes without saying, right? Sliders or burgers, immense. Yeah, definitely. But like, oh, like Mexican, Italian. Yeah, just just everything. Put it all on one. I've always found it <laughs> funny. I've always found it funny that our cuisine as Americans is entirely basically either German or Italian stuff. The Germans with the pretzels and the hamburgers oh. and the Italians with the pizza and like the spaghetti and stuff like that. Like that's our entire cuisine really as Americans. And it's all based on like oh, yeah. Italian. And then of course, there's obviously like a lot of Mexican dogs. stuff. They're like the, corn uh, dogs. Yeah, chocolate. that's a German thing too. Yeah, like hot dogs and everything. Yeah, like yeah. that's the – so okay, before we wrap things up, I have a history tangent because you brought that up. And mm. I was shocked by this to learn this. But like before the large – because. German Americans are the largest 
uh, demograph of all Americans. Like more Americans are descended from Germans than any other country on the on right. the planet. Especially when you get to the Midwest, where it's like all oh, up in Minnesota here, it's like it's all Scandinavians and Germans. That's basically about it for a lot of the people. But I didn't know it's like until the large Germans came over to the U.S. Like people did not eat like pork. They didn't eat like pigs and stuff like that. Like that wasn't a huge thing. And that wasn't until like the Germans introduced it. Like, oh yeah, we eat that type of stuff that like really like corn dogs and hot dogs became a thing. Cause like, if you look at the diets of people before the Germans came, it was all like venison, like deer venison and like all this other stuff. But like, it was a lot more of a British thing because we are descended from British people. But like it is, but until the Germans came over and were like, Hey, we can actually like eat these pigs and like cows and stuff like that, that like it became like a thing. Yeah. Thank goodness for the Germans. (laughs) <laughs> thank, uh, I mean, well, yeah, thank goodness for them for that. Yeah, I will say that. No, I'm, I'm, Germ- I mean, Huffnagel was um one of my ancestors' names. So that's pretty, that's oh, pretty German right oops. there. So <laughs> pretty, yeah, mainly Norwegian with a little bit of German and then a little bit of Irish in there too. And a that's little so bit of cool. like, like 5% Italian. We got a little bit of Italian. Yeah, we got a smidge. <laughs> Jalot was the other name for the, the Italian side of me that goes oh. all the way back. And if you look at, if you look at my great grandfather, you can't convince me he wasn't in the mob just because he looked like the most mafia guy ever. Yo. So he wasn't though. Like he owned a farm and he, he owned a farm in Missouri where there's no mafia. So, you know, he wasn't, but like, just if you see him dressed up, it's like, yeah, he was definitely. He's got that character as well. yeah, like, totally totally wow, that's so cool so yeah and sophie i tell you this every single time before we have you on a year from now which i mean we will have you on a year from now it's going to be november of 2023 good god whoop, whoop. where would you like to be at in your bodybuilding where would you like to be at in just your overall life where are some goals that you'd like to have achieved oh i love that question um so this time last year i was still studying i'm now no longer studying so I take that off. Um, I now have an extra diploma in sports performance nutrition with distinction, just to say. Um, and I also progress. Distinction, what a nerd. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I also progress work-wise. Um, and I now do some additional, what we call like family work or family therapy. Try not to use the word therapy because I'm not a therapist. Um, family support and intervention for families that struggle with psychosis or someone in their family that's suffered with psychosis. So the current plan at the minute is to kind of take that as my little baby and create a team. And um, I've been given the opportunity to do so with those from above. Um, So yeah, hopefully that will happen work-wise. Bodybuilding wise, we might be taking a little bit of a hiatus and depending on what happens in terms of potentially maybe having a family or if that's not the way that the almighty whoever it is deems things to be then I would like to return probably as masters and take it from there and see what else we can achieve naturally (laughs) and yeah what I'm capable of that is great I hope I hope you guys I hope I I hope next time I have you on we see like a little Sophie or a little whatever your husband's name is yeah. on the, on the, on, on the side or something like that. But that would be, that would be great. And I love know, it again. I love having you on talking to you. I love how we got into a lot of tangents today because I love, I love doing that. Not just talking about, you know, the body and stuff, yeah. which is, which is great. But again, everyone go and check out Sophie on her Instagram page. You will be, you will be inspired. Get off that couch and stop eating all those Twinkies. And again, you will be shocked. <laughs> just like I said, she has the most deceptive arms of anyone that I've ever had on this podcast. So you, you will be, you will be shocked yep. by that. First of all, I will just, <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. So there's that. But again, everyone go and give her a follow. And Sophie, thank you so much for coming back on again. I really appreciate it. Honestly, I really look forward to this. And we had to reschedule this a couple of times for no various reasons. But I really appreciate your patience. So thank you. <laughs> oh my God. If I could give you a list of how many people have had to cancel for how many different dumb reasons. No, oh. your reasons weren't dumb, but I'm just mean other reasons that I found <laughs> to be kind of trivial. Like, yeah, obviously her reasons were not dumb, but I've had some reasons where like, yeah, I'm just feeling a little down today. And it's, or I'm feeling a little, when was, I'm just, my, my dog is feeling a little blue today. And I'm like, okay. Bring like on I, the I, podcast. I, <laughs> that <laughs> too. Yeah, that too. So it's like, first of all, how is your dog depressed? I don't, I, I don't know but they're from california so that's that whole different california thing where i don't even want to get into that but um yeah so absolutely no no worries at all i've again like i said this is just a hobby for me now if this was like a full-paying job then you know i'm i oh, it's yeah. it's still different you know but you know i still don't you know I, it's your time and your effort and we respect each other for our time and effort so thank you i appreciate that well again everyone this is ryan johnson dd on the spot signing off have a great day everyone <laughs>